Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, November Midwifery Hour, where I'm absolutely delighted to be shining a light on the importance of supporting and sustaining international midwives that have joined our UK midwifery workforce. And I'm really delighted to be here with my colleague and fellow midwife and lead midwife, uh, Nisha Ridley. Hi, Nisha. It's so lovely that you can be with us. Hi Anna, thank you so much. Yeah, it's great that we could share this. Uh, where we are in the northwest of England, it's quite dark and dreary tonight, but we hope that you're feeling cosy and warm wherever you are, um, wherever you're joining us tonight from. We're, Nisha and I are going to be joined by some extra guests that will be coming along from about 7.30 this evening to share some insights in how they're working to support well-being of international midwives and also to sort of learn and listen to the voices of international midwives with some research endeavours. But Nisha and I are going to start the evening tonight. And before we make a start, I just wanted to take some time to say a huge amount of thanks to uh, the usual curator and content developer of the midwifery hour, Sue McDonald. It's uh, quite, we were just saying, it's quite big boots to fill, um, being a chair of one of these important events. And a big thank you as well to Neil Stewart, Karen Stewart, and all the team at the midwifery hour, but also the Maternity and Midwifery Forum and Matt Flix for all the work they do to support and sustain midwives, both here in the UK and around the world. So I'm really delighted that as all for maternity, we can come along and really focus our attention on some of the key issues that are impacting on really busy practicing everyday midwives, working hard to provide quality safe care, personalized care, respectful care for women, people and families that are using maternity and perinatal services. So I'm going to take a moment now just to introduce the focus of this midwifery hour and to tell you a little bit about what you can expect from the hour. And then I'll be handing over to Nisha in a few minutes to present some insights from the work that she's been involved in developing supportive resources and supporting midwives to join the UK midwifery workforce from around the world. So I'm just gonna present my screen with you now just to give you some context for this evening's session. So I'm really delighted to be able to focus on this important transition that we've made to really think about um, the workforce that we support across England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, across the United Kingdom. And it's really critical to think about everybody in our workforce needs support and needs to be sustained. But tonight we're really going to focus in on international midwives who are either in the process of joining our UK midwifery workforce or have already transitioned and are settling into life joining our workforce. And we wanted to start by saying a huge thank you I'd like to extend our gratitude to all of those midwives that have made that big decision to leave their home and their, sometimes their family um, and, and their children in some circumstances to come and support us and our families here in the UK and our workforce here and our services across the United Kingdom. We are so grateful that you are sharing your expertise and we are also super grateful to everybody involved in supporting you to make those transitions from the national team and the work they've done to strengthen processes and systems to make this supported and, and as easy as possible from all the learning that's gone on in regional teams, local system teams and local maternity unit teams and all the hard work that's been going on locally in maternity and perinatal services to really welcome um, new colleagues from all different countries around the world. And we're going to hear a little bit more about that um, soon and shortly. But we just wanted to start with a huge amount of thank yous and, and gratitude. We want to also acknowledge that, you know, we are part of a global community of midwives and together midwives transform outcomes. Midwifery, quality midwifery care improves over 56 evidence-based outcomes for families, for women, 
and babies. And we know that's been captured really well in the Lancet Midwifery series and in other um, Co Cochrane reviews, such as Sandal, uh, Jane Sandal's work. We know that midwives are set and positioned to help families not only survive, but to thrive and transform in their lives. And we can make a difference to those physical outcomes and then also impact on positive experiences um, and perceptions of care and care provision, but we can also influence public health. So it's really important that we invest in our midwifery workforce both here in the United Kingdom and all, obviously all around the world. Yet we know from this, the State of the World's Midwifery Report, the latest edition was in 2021, that there is still huge gaps um, around midwifery and the numbers of midwives and regulated, registered and appropriately educated midwives around the world. And we do need 900,000 more midwives. And in the United Kingdom, we, we also have a deficit um, in our workforce and working really hard And the national and regional and local workforce teams are working really hard to address that collectively with, with education organisations to really come together to try and address those issues but all of the international recruitment activity in the United Kingdom had to be set in an ethical framework to make sure that we acknowledged that wider need of midwives around the world and so all of that recruitment activity was done really carefully with the World Health Organization and international bodies to ensure that any recruitment was done in an ethical and an ethical approach and obviously because midwifery can vary and the context of midwifery practice can vary around the world it was done really carefully to ensure um, equivalence of, of expertise training education and experience but equally, we have a really strong range of quality standards and frameworks that international midwives have to achieve when they come to join the UK maternity workforce. And that's governed by the Nursing and Midwifery Council. And it does mean that midwives that are joining our workforce from any other country from around the world do have to go through what I consider to be quite a significant journey with lots of hurdles and steps along the way for them to overcome and achieve, lots of um, moments of assessment from the recruitment stages all the way through to accessing visas, gaining you know, travel support, all the way through to the NMC test of competence, passing those assessments, uh, English language testing, and then obviously being suitable for um, local practice. So there's a lot that midwives are having to face and many of the midwives joining our workforce are, are very experienced, expert, specialist midwives working in their own country. have got lots to bring to the UK workforce, but still have to demonstrate that they can meet the standards of, of proficiency. And so I just wanted to start the session this evening, reminding us of the importance of offering support to those midwives because professionally they've got a gauntlet to get through but personally what a massive step to come away from your own culture your own environments where you're comfortable with your family support networks and then to enter a new country and to settle into life outside of work as well and we know how important it is for us to be you know supported well not just professionally but personally I'd like to take a moment to just acknowledge that there's so many people working to support and help international midwives to settle and to feel support. Um, we've got the Association of South Asian Midwives doing lots of work to help and also the Society of African and Caribbean Midwives, just to name a couple of those wider societies that are there to reach out. So if you're an international midwife watching this, maybe you could reach out to those organisations alongside us at All for Maternity and obviously connect in with the Midwifery Maternity Forum, Matflix, and also uh, the Midwifery Hour that you're engaging with now. But there's a wide range of resources there to support you. And I, it's really important to acknowledge those people that are doing great work to help. 
We also recognise that as you transition into life here in the UK, or if you're supporting midwives that are transitioning to life in the UK and professional working careers as midwives in the UK work for us, we wanted to put together a webinar series at all for maternity that you could access. So we've developed a webinar series, myself and Nisha and the team at all for maternity, to create a four part series that will support you um, to really survive and thrive during your career as a midwife in the UK. So we've created a special resource that will help to give you support facilitated by a range of leaders that can give you really good support around your clinical knowledge and awareness of midwifery in the UK. So myself and Nisha are both midwives here in the UK and have worked across education, practice, research and leadership. But then we're also going to be joined on the programme by Aaron Turner, who you're going to meet later this evening. And collectively, we're going to provide a programme that not only supports your learning needs, gives you an opportunity to explore your experiences in an interactive way. But you're also going to get an opportunity to be supported with your ongoing well-being needs, thinking about you, your self-care and how you can sustain yourself and thrive in your experiences and throughout your career. So it, really the, um, the, the webinar series is here to support you um, to, to kind of feel good about your work and to enjoy being a midwife here in the UK, to give you a real focus on your career as a midwife, but then also to give you that pastoral support as well. So there's gonna be four sessions that you can get engaged with. Um, looking at different contexts over a four-part series. And it's going to be accompanied by free learning and support resources. So we're really delighted that you'll get interactive eBooks that are free. You'll get resources to make notes. You'll get a certificate and you're going to get free access to Aaron's One Thought program so that you can access meaningful wellbeing support, which is really exciting that we can give all of these free resources to you. We've all, we want to make sure that you have access to the recordings, whether you can join live for the webinars or not, you can still make use of the resource because everything will be recorded. You'll be able to read ebook chapters and make notes. And you'll also be able to make notes when you watch any of the recordings. And we have an interactive space where you can ask questions of the presenters and of each other and create a bit of a community feel. So if you're really interested in taking part, you can use the QR code and you can register via Eventbrite. It's only £15 for international midwives to join or anyone that's supporting international midwives would benefit from accessing the webinar as well. So anyone involved in workforce retention or practice development midwives or others preceptors that are working closely to support international midwives locally at unit level all the way through to system and regional levels. So we really invite you warmly to join us. So I'm now going to take a moment to um, hand over to my colleague, Nisha, who's going to be able to give you an opportunity to learn more about the work that's being done nationally and regionally, um, but also focus on the needs of midwives that are joining our workforce but also give some ideas for those of you that might be supporting midwives to, to transition to the UK, um, ideas and tips of things you might consider to really help people to feel welcomed and to transition to life here in the UK. So Nisha, it, it'd be nice if you wanted to share your screen and then we can give you a lovely warm welcome. So whilst Nisha's just sharing a screen, it'd be nice um, just to give you a little bit of a bio for Nisha. So Nisha's a senior midwifery lecturer, was a, a senior midwifery lecturer at um, the, the University of Central Lancashire. But she's also had roles in higher education and across Health Education England and NHS England. She's worked at a regional level as a workforce lead. 
And in that role, Nisha supported the process of recruitment and transition of international midwives across the Northwest region into the UK midwifery workforce. Nisha's passionate about safe quality midwifery education, practice, leadership and research, and has been involved in strengthening equity, diversity and cultural safety across midwifery education and practice. So we're so delighted to have you with us, Nisha. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you so much, Anna, for that lovely, warm welcome. And I echo what Anna said. Thank you. Huge thanks for the Imagery of Hour for allowing us to come and share our experience and to offer the support as well. So thank you so much, Anna. So hi, everybody. My name is Nisha Ridley. Um, and as Anna said, I am the Education Organisational Development Lead alongside my colleague Hannah Tizard. And we work together with Anna at All for Maternity. I am a midwife um, and in my previous role before joining All for Maternity, I worked as the Educational Workforce Lead for NHS England. And previous to that, I was with Health Education England. And my area of work and my passion for this um, area of work around international recruitment and how I could best support midwives coming over from um, other areas across the world over to England to join our midwifery workforce here in the UK. I started um, as part of my role in NHS England is I started the work um, together with my colleagues in the team around, you know, how we're going to best recruit other midwives from across the world to support our midwifery workforce here and to support the families that are um, being cared for across the Northwest. So um, I spent some time with that team looking at the best way to do that, obviously working really closely with our regional colleagues and our national team as well. So I'll share with you my experience along the way um, and the support that we can offer and how we can really celebrate those that have made the decision to come over and to help us to support their journey here across um, midwifery here in, in, in the UK as well. So just to give you a bit of a quick outline as to what we're going to look at. So we're looking at, you know, obviously midwifery is a global issue, as Anna said. We've got a huge shortage of midwives across the world. Um, but we noticed, you know, particularly across the NHS that we had a, an issue here, um, you know, in terms of what we needed in terms of our workforce needs to support women and families here in the UK. But obviously, Caring for women across the country, they have their different needs in terms of our local uh, communities that we have, but also for the midwives coming over to different parts of the UK. It's cold and dreary here in the northwest, which you know can be a real challenge in terms of adaptation and things. So we'll have a look at that too. How we can best support our colleagues who are coming over here in England to support our midwifery workforce, what opportunities, but what challenges they may face as well, how we can best support them and how we can support them then obviously to help nurture and grow their midwifery career here in the UK as well. So obviously when midwives come over um, from other parts of the world, as Anna said, it's quite a, well, it is a very robust um, process for them coming over. But in terms of the recruitment and the hurdles and the barriers that they have to overcome to even start applying for midwifery and um, over here in England, you know, it's huge. We're not talking of newly qualified midwives. We're talking about midwives often that have had many years of experience. And it's really important, I feel, to really acknowledge the knowledge, the skills and the expertise that they bring with them. Often when um, I used to interview midwives from all areas of the world, um, most of them were working in senior leadership positions, but a lot of them had continued with that clinical care. A lot of them had cared for families in really challenging situations environmentally, but um, socially, culturally as well. So they bring a vast amount of experience over with them. Obviously, there are challenges adapting here to our National Health Service in the way we practice, but it's really important to acknowledge actually what expertise and they are bringing with them, that leadership that they're bringing with them as well. And it's so wonderful to hear from them and be able to learn from them um, in, in areas that we probably maybe have never thought of as well. So when we um, look at obviously bringing midwives over from um, other areas or for them to want to obviously apply for them to come over, it's really important to um, acknowledge actually what a midwife is and, and 
from terms of the NHS and the national team and regional teams as well, as well as local integrated care boards and local maternity systems, will work off the International Confederation of Midwives definitions. So they will look at actually what is a midwife. Um, and it's really important this because obviously we want to ensure that the safety and quality of care that these midwives are offering is to that same standard. Um, and that our families are safe when caring for, but that also when they come over, the expectation of what they're going to be doing in terms of their work is, is you know, is known and is available as well. So the general competencies are looked at, they look at, you know, what kind of experience they have in terms of antenatal care or pre-pregnancy care, care during labour and birth and ongoing care of the mother and the baby and the family and the postnatal care as well. This can obviously challenge, challenges are that it's different across all areas of the world, but the basic competencies are, are the same. And that's really important when we're mapping over the competencies of midwives that have come over. It's also important to acknowledge that um, most, um, when, we're, when we're asking candidates when they're applying, that the role of the midwife is recognised often in their title as well. So sometimes they're called nurse midwives, but what's important is that they have had care of women in that pregnancy period, in that birthing period and that postnatal period as well. And again, you know, going back to the Lancet series, it's again really important to acknowledge, you know, the definition of a midwife on a global scale as well. You know, understanding and recognizing actually that skilled in the knowledge and compassionate care for women, for their families across that whole continuum is recognizing that role of the midwife and those core skills and those clinical skills and those practice skills, you know, including caring for women in a normal physiological environment, but also taking care of the social side of things, the cultural side of things as well is really important. And this is all acknowledged as part of the international recruitment from a national perspective across the NHS and from a regional perspective as well. And regional teams will work closely um, with trusts when their area as well to understand and acknowledge actually the work that those midwives are doing when they're applying and recognising actually the skills that they will bring as well as part of their role when they apply here too. So obviously, as Anna said, again, we, we are well aware that there is a global shortage of midwives um, across the whole world. Um, and this can be obviously we, we hear about it here in England. It's really acknowledged as part of the NHS workforce plan. But what's really important is that when we are asking midwives to come over and support our workforce here in England, that we are doing it in an ethical way. And this is really important, and it has been the main focus of recruitment right from the beginning when I was working on the NHS regional team. And that value is held by everybody working in the national team, the regional teams, the local teams as well. There is an ethical framework for recruitment, and this applies across all of healthcare. Um, and this will apply especially for nursing and midwifery as well. If there is a country that is on what we would call the red list, then it is not allowed for us to even approach anybody working in those areas um, to bring them over because it is recognised that the health services in the country that those people are applying for really need the expertise of those midwives and caring for those families, the women, the families and the, and the babies in that area. And it is right that we obviously don't um, jeopardise anybody else's health system as a result of that. As part of the work that we do as part of the um, national framework, we also look at actually what the experiences of people um, when they come over here to England. It's really important from an ethical perspective to make sure that people are supported in a, in a really, um, in, in a supportive and nurturing way. What can be a challenge for midwives and nurses, um, and we learned a lot from nursing because nursing was well ahead of the game in terms of international recruitment. What we learned a lot from nursing, and then that applied to midwifery, is actually the challenges that people feel when they come over here. Not only are they uprooting their own lives, they're often leaving families behind. And what was really important in line with the ethical recruitment, but then the retention and support of those midwives and nursing staff as well, is that we tailor that support around them when they arrive. 
we know from the evidence um, and, you know, the, I've listed a couple of um, studies down there, but also from news from the Nursing and Midwifery Council and from the Workforce uh, workforce NHS documents as well, that often midwives will experience communication challenges. You know, they feel that they don't often have their voice heard. Um, they often feel when they arrive here, the cultural challenges, you know, as simple as, eating different food and not feeling at home. And actually the times are different, the shifts are different as well. There's a variation in the way that we practice here um, across the NHS, um, but also bullying and discrimination. And I'll go in that in a little bit more detail as well. That is one that is really highlighted, particularly in the workforce agenda around the res document with the NHS. And we'll share about how we can best support midwives um, to not experience these challenges too. So going back to the international um, ethical framework for um, recruitment, again, it's really important to not um, recruit midwives and nurses from countries that are on the red list. And in terms of the recruitment toolkit that we follow from a national scale, but a regional scale and a local scale as well, you know, this is the toolkit. It's hugely in detail and most um, recruiters and workforce leads in each trust as well will be well aware of this document and from a regional perspective we follow it really carefully to make sure that we are also supporting midwives in the best way to arrive here but that we're helping them to make the right choice in terms of their own home country needs um, but for them as well as an individual person too. Often trusts will use um, agencies, regions will use agencies, um, but again, we're really confident in terms of the ethical recruitment that we only use agencies that work with this ethical recruitment toolkit. And that obviously really important as well to share that message right across the NHS. We are also aware, like we said earlier, about the local context. There are definitely differing needs from different trusts. So you might find as an international midwife, if you're coming over, if you've been from another country, you might apply to one trust or you might apply to a different region. And although generally they may ask the same um, general things for you, there may be variations that you notice in terms of the geography or the environment or social context and cultures that you care for as, as for the families that you look after. Um, and, and, you know, it's important to be aware of this because actually what is important is that actually we're recruiting people who are aware of those needs. Um, and also different trusts will recruit large, larger or smaller numbers of midwives as well, according to their workforce needs. And what is also important is that we have the midwives to be able to support those midwives as well through a coaching or a mentoring system. So when I first came to NHS England and looking at the international recruitment of midwives, this is exactly how it felt. It felt like this massive mountain. I was stood at the bottom looking right up going, where do I even begin? And like we said, we, we learned a lot from nursing and my colleagues in the nursing department at uh, uh, the regional teams had really started this amazing work. I've got to put a big shout out to Trish, who actually really started and led on this work right from the beginning. Um, and once we got into the flow of it and I really understood and I read the recruitment toolkit and I got familiar with the um, recruitment leads in each trust who'd had loads of experience for nursing and I learned from them actually what should we do, what have we learned from nursing, what have we learned from other professions, it felt like we were really getting going. We had... Um, a target given to us from the national team, which was important to our to meet our workforce needs across the Northwest. Um, but it, to me, it was really important to understand that local context as well. So in discussion with our trusts, actually, what do you need in terms of your workforce? How can we best support you to support the midwives that are coming over from it, from all the areas of the world? Um, but then how do we support them to best support families as well? And the first thing we learn is actually let's have a starting post. Actually, let's look at where we need to start and where we need to go from there. And a big thing was let's welcome them with open arms to begin with. Um, the feedback that I've had from midwives that have come over you know, they say that when trusts are welcoming, particularly even on the interview panel, if trusts are present and are visible on that interview panel, it means so much. 
even if they're not able to come and do the interview, even if they're able to send an email to welcome me um, over to the Northwest or welcome me to the Trust, it means so much. And that communication all the way through is so important to our midwives that are, are, you know, are, are changing their lives, sacrificing so much at home to come and join our workforce here. The recognition, actually, that, um, you know, I will bring with me a different culture. I will bring with me different experience. Let's celebrate that, that they bring over with them. Let's listen to them. Let's listen to their expertise and their area. And if, as you know, as this evidence is telling us here, if we really embrace it and celebrate it, we're going to have such a wonderful multicultural system, which is going to be so different for our women and families that we're caring for. If we think about the Embrace report and we think about the workforce needs across the NHS, it's so evident to us that a multicultural environment is one that's going to thrive and where we support each other as well. So again, looking at the evidence, support is a huge thing. And this is support right from the beginning before midwives even come over all the way through to supporting them through their transition journey, so the preceptorship and beyond. So bridging programmes, even contacting them, making points of contact, making celebration events, making time to speak to them online is so important. Doing some face-to-face -face colleague training when they arrive here, greeting them at the airport, greeting them at their destination when they've got here, supporting them through their midwifery oskies. And then following that as well, organising social events. We had a fantastic event over in Liverpool. Um, it was around Christmas time when we, some of the midwives arrived and they fed back to us how excited they were that they'd had time to spend with midwives outside of the NHS, outside of that working environment, because sometimes that's where we really get to know each other the best, isn't it? So, um, you know, it's really nice to hear that feedback. And I think something that we cannot underestimate is the stress that must be involved for those midwives when they first come over here. You know, not only are they coming to a different country, but the stress of booking the airport, making sure the visa requirements are all complete. Often we were booking flights two to three days beforehand because it took that long for all of the visa requirements to get completed. Um, you know, routing, leaving your family at home and coming to a place here where you're living in a very small accommodation that's provided for you, not having any say over your OSCE because you know you've got to go in and it's a full six weeks of training, for example, it must be really stressful. But what we do know is actually the solution to care is not, is the solution to dealing with stress is not just about self-care, it's about all of us coming together. And that means the trusts, the regional teams, the national teams, midwives supporting other midwives, managers supporting our midwives, supporting them through that transition. And we know, don't we, if we support midwives and we support each other, we get the best out of each other, really. Creating that sense of belonging. And we encourage as part of the regional team forming little communities of practice. So getting little WhatsApp groups together or Facebook groups together um, and creating a space where they could chat and spend time together. Um, you know, even one OSCE provider we dealt with and we worked with, you know, went out to pick out all food that they would have usually in their home country um, and created that sense of culture around food and that belonging, that little community there. And it was really important because actually those midwives felt that they had a space where we could chat together and that space where we could belong together. And it really did bring out such joy and happiness where they could share over food because we all love food, don't we? And it's a really um, a space where we can come together, share and talk and actually, you know, share our challenges, but share our successes as well. And with that sense of community and that sense of belonging, that's where your support is. You know, there is that acceptance there of actually, you know, I'm going to celebrate diversity here because it's going to bring so much care for the families that we have in our local communities as well. It's going to have such a significant impact, so much feedback that we would get as a regional team around Thank you so much for helping me and supporting me and listening to me and communicating with me. It was so important. And, and it goes back to a saying of that people never forget how you make them feel. And those early days when they are feeling stressed, it's so important for them to feel welcomed and that sense of belonging as well. 
So three P's to remember, professional, pastoral and practical support. And this is around the support that we can offer our midwives. What is really important from a clinical perspective is not just to offer that professional care, but to offer that pastoral care and that practical care for them as well. And that isn't just from the beginning, but that is all the way through their journey too. Here at Awful Maternity, we have just launched our brand new hub. Um, but on top of that, we also worked really closely with our regional teams who have funded um, a programme for our internationally educated midwives to welcome them. And our internationally educated midwives, if any of them are here from the Northwest, you will know that you're already accessing this through our Reform Maternity website. And there is a dedicated area that is just dedicated for you to work on your English language skills and your CBT, which is part one of the NMC test. And we're really excited to share there that actually those internationally educated midwives will have access um, to the Practicing Midwife and our journals. And if you're not already a member here and you want to be a member, please do contact us at the Practicing Midwife where you'll get access to all the online resources, which are the journals, the brand new hub as well, the learning, sharing and caring spaces where we create a sense of community for you to meet each other and create that networking as well, but also supporting your training as well because your English language support and your assessment preparation are so important. And on that, we've really developed and listened to the feedback from our internationally educated midwives around what you need in terms of preparing for your test of competence and your ROSCI as well. So as part of that, we will focus on the preparation to practice, but actually ongoing, what do we really need to support you, to support your career and support your ongoing development as well? So this is the um, pre practice preparation spaces that we have, but it's also important for us as part of our learn, share and care ethos as well to create that sense of belonging and that sense of community space for you there. So a really huge thanks to all of the practice education leads across um, the Northwest for supporting us with this, for all of the internationally educated midwives, for the regional team, the national team, for the funding as well. And we're really glad that everybody's been able to access this and the brand new hub, which we're really excited to launch this week, um, which will give you on the go training and support in terms of your future leadership as well. So just final slide now, just to share, to say, you know, what's the next steps? Well, for us at Awful Maternity, we want to work closely with our regional colleagues again to look at ongoing leadership and development support, recognising all of those skills and expertise that our midwives bring over with them and actually how we can support you to support our women and families, but through your own leadership development as well. So we'll be working closely with our regional colleagues to do those final stages of that funding. And we really hope that you join us here at All for Maternity, um, where we will share our sense of um, understanding and listening to you and learning from you, bringing all your expertise. We hope to um, learn through you. We share with you and care with you through our spaces and our networking. Um, and just thank you for being part of our membership and as part of our journey here. And we really hope that, you know, we can help and support you in any way that we can here. Thank you so much, Nisha. It was such a wonderful insight into your learning and experiences as well. And thank you to you for the work you've done to support all of the people involved in international recruitment, as well as the midwives that you've worked really closely with. So I'm really delighted that you could be here to share that. And we're so lucky that you're part of our community now, um, working really closely with all the midwives that access our resources and information. And I'm really delighted now to take a moment to welcome our following guests. So I've got my friend and colleague, um, Aaron Turner, who's, we've worked on a few projects now supporting midwives um, around the world and actually locally and regionally as well, both leaders of midwifery and now the international midwives. And I'm delighted to be joined by another colleague of Aaron's, Nikki Butchart, who's been involved in researching and offering support to listen to the voices of international midwives and their experiences, using some of the resources that we're offering, but also learning from them about their experiences of joining the workforce here. So first of all, let me say a big hello to Aaron Turner. Aaron, it's so nice that you could be with us. I'm just going to tell people a little bit about you, if that's okay. So um, okay. Aaron... 
uh, yeah hi <laughs> He, he got his doctorate and master's in medical anthropology, which is something we actually share together while working at the Centre of Health, at Centre for Health, Sickness and Disablement at Brunel University. In 2000, he changed his professional focus towards clarity of mind and the potential for well-being based on the groundbreaking work of Sydney Banks. And since then, he's pioneered the, rel the relevance of an understanding, the relevance of an understanding to state of mind as a counsellor with individuals, couples, families, and as a consultant and educator to a wide range of leaders and organisations. And as I said before, with midwives working across the NHS, ranging from businesses, corporations, and in the private sector to the NHS, the military, Department of Defence, and to non-profit organisations and charities. What's really special is that all of his work focuses on the potential and importance of clarity and well-being, both to us as individuals, but to the endeavours of organisations and teams. Um, so it's really brilliant, Aaron, that you could be part of the programme of national work to support international midwives and that you can be here to talk to us about your program that you have available actually because of national funding for international midwives. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I I um, just wanted to say a few things. It's a real pleasure to be able to be here. Thank you, Anna, for having me. Um, so I just wanted to say a little bit about the work that we're doing. So as Anna said, um, my work at One Thought is focused on our potential to have clarity and well-being independent from the circumstances that we're in. And you can imagine because of that work, most of my work has focused on circumstances in which people are in challenging circumstances, either because of the demands of their job, the demands of their life, the demands of their life and their work. <laughs> because if you are in a challenging circumstance, it's very common to have stress and to burden, and it's very common to have burnout because most people do not understand the potential for their state of mind for clarity and well-being independent of circumstance. So I, my work, I'm kind of on a mission. I'm on everybody's corner. And my mission is to help people understand that our potential for well-being and our potential for clarity is independent of our circumstances. So that brings me to the work that I've done within the health service and, and which started with Anna and the work that we did with midwives where the situations were challenging, not only technically, clinically, just pure, the pure volume and demands of work, but also the social, the political environment that was all weighing on people until they saw that their state of mind was separate from their circumstances and they were able to access their own potential for clarity and well-being. And that brought us to the work that we are doing for international midwives. And you'll hear a bit more about this from Nikki, that, you know, the expectation was that the international midwives would have all those challenges, plus the challenges of moving country, being in a different culture, being outsiders, having to pass a lot of the qualifications and tests. Like it's hugely demanding. And if your state of mind, if you don't know that your state of mind is independent, just imagine the psychological, emotional, physical burden of that. So our online resource was funded to give international midwives the opportunity to discover a bit more of their potential for clarity, resilience, and well-being, independent of those demands, which aren't going to change. Um, and so we feel like that's a really important resource. The reason I'm talking to you guys about it is because we have had a lot of challenge um, with, I mean, well, basically this resource is funded and available. Um, all of, uh, well, uh, 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 hundreds of international midwives have been emailed. We've had an cam email campaign. We've looked to get them registered. But what we found is it's very difficult to get the information about this resource to the international midwives and to the people that are helping and supporting them um, so that they know that it's there. That's the first challenge. And so that we can make sure they're registered. So we're looking to increase our ability to make this resource available to international midwives. And then because the demands of their life and job uh, are so challenging, 
We're also looking to find additional ways to help support their engagement and use of this resource. Um, so personally, I feel like it's a, a, a little bit of a, what would you say, tragedy, travesty, that there's support and potential available to people that could really benefit for it. So the international midwives and the other midwives we've talked to have really valued this learning, this support, this resource. Um, it's available, it's funded, but yet there's the minority of people that know about it and have found a way to find the time to engage with it. So we're looking for help with that. Um, I would um, love for any of you that are international midwives yourself or working with or supporting international midwives to maybe reach out to us at info at onethought.com um, and um, help us to kind of spread the word and get people engaged. Um, in addition to this resource, um, there is also a funded research project that's that's kind of an important resource in its own right, um, which we also want to help people be, have a bit more awareness of. And that's uh, what Nikki's here to talk to you guys about. Thank you so much, Aaron. And, you know, we will make sure that the information that you've shared and the contact details are shared as part of the resource, this film, this recording. So anyone watching, look out for those links on the Midwifery Hour um, web platform from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. And so we'll make sure that that's available for people through that. Or if you if you are currently watching and you're supporting international midwives locally, regionally, or nationally, then please do reach out as well, because you can obviously ask, access this resource for your midwives that are working here in the UK. Um, I just wanted to give a warm welcome. Um, you know, Aaron's handed over the baton to Nikki to tell us a little bit more about the research, you know, why it's so important to listen to international midwives through research, what's their experiences. Um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Nikki before I hand over to her. So Nikki's um, a researcher, practitioner and well-being specialist, but she's also quite simply the innate health research magic maker. So she's working with profound capability and versatility to support the innate health research team as their managing director. So Nikki does lots of work in um, lots of support for leaders, for women, female leaders, and supports a, a wide range of people around the world with their well-being and clarity, and now is working to support research endeavours through the Innate Re Health Research um, Company. And we're just really delighted that you were able to come as an organisation to support an understanding of this important resource that has made such a difference to my life as a, a working midwife and mum. Um, but also seeing the impact it's had for other midwives working across the NHS, as Aaron's mentioned. So thanks, Nikki, for being with us. I'm actually going to share my screen so that you can see some of the slides that you've prepared for us. So I'm just going to do that now. Um, just one second. And then you can kind of make a start. Um, let's just do this. Thank you. Hi everyone and um, thank you for having me. I'm also delighted to be here and um, particularly passionate to be helping to research this um, particular project and this particular group of amazing people. So as, as Aaron said, we just want it to get bigger <laughs> so that we can hear more and more stories. So um, I have worked with uh, lots of people all over the world and helping support their well-being and helping them access what Aaron is talking about. But I saw a real um, need to, I just really was sort of drawn to s helping to build the evidence base for it. So I joined um, the, the founding team at Innate Health Research who were on that mission too. Um, and we really try to, which we're trying to sort of change, actually, Anna, if you go on to the next one, yeah. we're, we're taking that idea that Aaron talked about that, that anyone can access um, clarity, wisdom, um, a calm state of mind, no matter what their circumstances. And we are trying to build an evidence base for that because 
all of us in our organization have felt the personal impact of that. And we've seen the impact in the people that we've worked with. And we therefore are trying to build a really independent um, research base around it. And in, in doing so, really trying to change the way the world thinks about mental health and you know, including stress and and all these things that Aaron's just talked about. Um, <clears throat> and we do that, if you move on to the next one, in complete collaboration. And I think that's what really sets us apart from a lot of other research that's, that's being done and very little being done in this space. But um, we really try to bring the voices of the participants going through programmes that we are researching into what we're doing and we and we get the voices of those lived experiences like yours Anna um, to help us design the research in a way that is really impactful and will really collect the right sort of stories Um, and so what we really want to do is document the experiences that international midwives are having whenever they engage in Aaron's program so as soon as they engage in Aaron's program they're able to engage in our research and it's incredibly, um, you know, there's there's nothing difficult for them to do. It's really just a case of getting started, engaging with it and telling us what they think. And so there's no right or wrong answers. Um, and we have a few um, open ended uh, questions and the, the the quotes that are on the screen are some of the examples of things that midwives joining Aaron's program and joining the research are talking about. And so you can see there's quite difficult circumstances that they're that they're joining the program through. And we want to help demonstrate through the research that Aaron's program is having an impact on some of that. Um, and there's a link in here, uh, which I believe Anna will share with you, which helps you get started. And if you have any questions you can also about the research, you can also email me and I'm sure Anna will share that as well. Yes, thank you. Thanks so much, um, Nikki. I'm sorry that I had a little blip in my uh, internet connection, I think. Oh, that's I, right. I, thought you, I, I thought we needed to wrap up. I thought... <laughs> disappear but um you know thank you so much for you know shining a light on the importance of research and you know we know we're rec- we recognize across healthcare that there are still huge gaps in our evidence base and yet the evidence base is required to help inform practice development and so by having this opportunity to research a program that's readily available and and having an impact um, it's really critical, actually, that that you're doing this piece of work um, and supporting as, a, as an organisation, supporting an understanding of a programme that's having an impact that we're seeing, like you say, we're, we're hearing anecdotally, we're seeing through evaluations and feedback informally that it's having an impact on people. So I think the message that we're hearing from Aaron and Nikki is that we there's a resource that's available. Um, so for anybody watching that has access, that would like access to the resource for their midwives, their international midwives, um, please do get in touch with us and we'll make sure that all the contact details for being in touch is available. Or inviting your international midwives to check through their their emails because they have been invited um, to take part. Aaron picked up that one of the things we want to make sure that we offer, sometimes when you're offered something new, such as a digital resource, it can be, you might be uncertain of how to access it practically through to not understanding what it's going to be beneficial for. So we are, Aaron, just before you arrived, we gave information about the webinar series that we're launching from next the next Wednesday, where there'll be an opportunity to have a bit more hand-holding for international midwives. This resource will be available um, completely free for any midwife, international midwife in the Northwest region because of funding that was identified, but then is also available at a really low rate, affordable rate for other international midwives to access. It's just £15 for four webinar series. Obviously, you'll gain access to the One Thought online programme, and then you'll also get support on how to access the programme alongside that series and get a chance to speak more closely 
closely with Aaron about the program and how best to make use of it. So we're really looking forward to making that available. All of the sessions will be recorded. So don't worry if you can't be available live, you will be able to catch up. So it's something that's worth doing, even if you're not available um, for four weeks in a row from the 22nd of November. But I'm going to come now to spend the final parts of the um, session together just to open up some questions and to feed in some questions that have been coming through from the live stream, if that's OK. So we're just going to have all of us on the screen where we can maybe start and continue a conversation together about the importance of supporting and sustaining international midwives that are joining our workforce. There was a question that had already come through um, that I thought we could direct at um, at Nisha maybe actually, because this is a, a question that's come through Nisha from Sarah Gregson. Yeah. She's um, a midwife that's currently looking to support a midwife from Bangladesh who yeah. actually has already arrived in the UK and is currently working as a care assistant in a care home. Yeah. She's actually desperate um, to get back into midwifery, but obviously needs some support. So do you do you have any advice about how this midwife could support this midwife from Bangladesh? Yeah, thank you so much for your question. Um, and yes, this happens a lot where people have come over, they come for a different role initially to begin with, perhaps midwifery wasn't applying at that time for vacancies, um, but actually there were midwives um, back in their home country and are educated or so. So I think the first thing you need to do is um, speak to the um, workforce lead in your trust to see what we can do to support that midwife. Sometimes it might be through um, a sponsor Sponsorship, or it might be through a certain recruitment agency that perhaps your trust is using to support the international midwives that are coming over to the UK. Um, the the beauty of choosing the workforce leads or um, speaking to the recruitment agency that you may well use is that they will know exactly what to look for in terms of qualification of that midwife so they'll be able to map their experience in terms of the ICM standards the Lancet series as well to ensure that obviously she's got the right skills in the right areas and if she hasn't then that might be something she'd be able to do in her current post to be able to get those skills um, and resources as well. Um, and then the other thing I would do is direct her to English language resources and CBT resources. So again, we've got them available on Awful Maternity, where fun, um, these have been funded by the Northwest Regional Team for the Northwest Region, but it may be that your regional team have also subscribed and so they'll be able to support her or him through um, support, you know, getting ready for those NMC tests and that, um, that standard and that test of competency to begin with. Thanks so much, Nisha. It's great um, start. Hopefully that helps Sarah. Um, something that I wanted to just check in about was um, just to ask, you know, some people might be watching wondering what the actual online One Thought programme involves, Aaron. So I was just wondering if you might just share a little bit of insight about when we talk about the One Thought online programme, what is it that we're actually talking about? Um. So the One Thought online program is everything you need to know to have a clearer mind and higher level of well-being with no effort in any circumstance. So um, based off the last 20 years of my experience working in this field, I broke the key the, the key pieces of understanding you need to have a to, to, to find your potential for more clarity. I broke down into nine core lessons. So there are nine core lessons, each a step in the direction. It's li you could consider it like a tour of understanding your state of mind. We take you to all the key spots. And then you get to have, so you know what the core pieces of understanding are because they're in the core lessons. Uh, and these are videos that are between 10 to 25 minutes long. And then in each section, we have a whole host of supporting videos that are two to 20 minutes long that cover how these nuggets apply to different areas of life, to your relationships, to your stress, to your well-being, to your work, to organizations, to culture, um, to conflict, to listening, to communication. So you get to follow the applications that interest you. So um, the course has two benefits. The first benefit is 
you get to generate an understanding that will give you more freedom and potential in your state of mind. The second benefit is you get to a lot of people that have used the resource have said it, it, it's kind of like an oasis. It's a place to take a break. It's a place to get a reset. So the very act of listening to it allows you to kind of step back and reset. Um, so um, there's kind of that uh, acute benefit of getting a, a, a break and a reset in your mind. And there's the more long-term uh, benefit of discovering your freedom of mind and more about your potential to effortlessly feel better and, and feel more resilient no matter what you face. Thanks, Aaron. It's really helpful. And I've found being able to listen back and almost sometimes when I'm at walking or, you know, might be mm -hmm. even in the kitchen and having having being able to listen to the resource. Um, it's a, a resource that you can stay with you for life. Um, but the midwives will get yes. access to it for a year. So it's something that mm -hmm. they can work through. There is like a time bound amount of time just minimum amount of time you could just spend accessing all the lessons and resources but actually I know from many people that access it they re they like to return to it at different times in their life um you know maybe following a, a challenging shift or facing something that's impacting on you or you're noticing your feelings shifting it can be good to return back to it regularly uh, just to help you to stay focused or stay clear really um, and notice when you're becoming yeah. unclear <laughs> is what I, I, I use it for. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah, that absolutely. I just I think just because of the time that we've got available, because it was just an hour's opportunity to come together. I just wanted to quickly invite Nikki, if you could just share again, if for people that are accessing the program that are international midwives, the One Thought program, how can they get involved in the research so they can share their points of view and perspectives? Um, so there's a there's basically a link to a page where they can register for the research. So you can access that link through Aaron's online program. It's up on the home page there. And I think we can copy and paste the link here in the chat or um, in the resources that you send out afterwards. It's a very simple link and you um, you just sign up, you um, you 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 consent basically it's all sort of ethically done so we just want to make sure there's information explaining what it's all about explaining who the partners are there's a university there's all for maternity there's one thought and then there's us innate yeah. health so there's a lot of information to make sure you feel completely comfortable um it will explain all about how the the um answers are all anonymous nobody finds out what you've said um it's all fully GDPR data protection um, and then basically you go through and you answer a number of questions in a survey that are about your experience so there's no, there's no right or wrong you're just answering them as you as you come yeah. and we invite you to do that three times so you'll do it the first time and then the system um, automatically sends you a reminder to do it um, a number of weeks or months later and then again the third time and it it just means that we capture your journey we capture what's happening and how you're experiencing it and whether or not Aaron's you know speaking truth and <laughs> and things shift for you we t we then pick that up in the research I think that's important to know actually Nikki just to be clear for people that we are looking for people that have accessed the program to complete the research so just to differentiate it's it's it'd be lovely to do a piece of work that's I, I think it's already actually been done a piece of work that's asking midwives about their experiences of joining the workforce this one's a little bit of a step on where we're inviting midwives that have taken Aaron's program um, and the one thought online program specifically to share their experiences of what impact that's had on them or how has it influenced them, what, what their feelings and perspectives alongside what are their experiences and perspectives of working across the UK workforce. So I think it's just being clear for, for those that are, are international midwives at the moment, they absolutely can get involved in the research and it'd be great if they can 
before they do that is register sign up for for the one thought program that's been made freely available because of the funding from the national team so i think we're coming to the end of the hour together so i just want to say a massive thank you to you all so nikki thank you like me you've got children that you've navigated to try and be free and child free we're always at threat of the children bursting in at any moment and my little wild bill <laughs> <laughs> to get his siblings sort of entertaining him whilst I'm here. So thank you for that and making time. Nisha, thank you for leading the session and sharing your expertise, um, you know, really leading a lot of this work in a regional area of NHS England. And thank you to Aaron for all of the leadership and thought leadership you offer the world around how we can become well, regardless of whatever happens in our life. And I think having a direct um having direct experience of, of of your teaching and learning uh, as you know I'm, I'm a massive advocate for my colleagues but also for midwives working around the world and I just wanted to also take a moment just to acknowledge the wider team at Innate Health also um, another colleague Colette um, who's really worked really closely with Aaron and I supporting midwives um, but also Professor Jill Thompson at the University of Central Lancashire as well, who's helped be a conduit for getting some of the ethical hurdles out of the way. Um, and just thinking of all of the team at Innate Health that have been supporting in the background, all of the brilliant researchers that have pulled this important project together. Um, so thanks again to Sue for having a week off to let me be a chair and host a midwifery hour at, from all for maternity. And thanks again to Neil Stewart and the team at the Midwifery and Maternity Forum and Matt Flicks for, you know, all you do to celebrate midwives and support midwives with learning opportunities. So have a lovely evening, everybody that's watched us live. And obviously, if you're catching up, do stay in touch. We'll make sure all of the links and contact details are available for you. So thanks, everybody. <laughs>